Cool. Okay. Well, let's see where I put that extension. Could be anywhere. This video is massive at this point. Um, I had to unload all my video off of my uh, SD card on my uh, GoPro. Um, I did, however, find a couple of possible solutions for the hose clamp um, right here where it seems a little bit loose. Um, that was making me a little bit nervous uh, that, you know, every little bit helps when you're testing this out. So here's the square uh, nut I was talking about that goes on the hose clamp on the insulator. Um, so, and then I've got a little cylinder deal. The bolt I've got is just some random thing, quite honestly. I'm not even going to bother showing it to you. It's not the right one, but it is the right threading for the nut. Um, and that little spacer, like I said, it helps you, it pr helps prevent you from clamping down the uh, insulator too hard. Um, there's a little ledge in there, and it holds that square nut so that you can tighten it without it turning around on you, basically. Just tighten that down, and then we'll go back to where we were at. I did pull off the spark plug boot while I was messing around downloading the video. Um, oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, that card feels... Solid on there. Okay, that's much better. All right. Um, so I pulled the spark plug boot off of there. Um, I got the right tool for it. So we're going to look at the spark plug, see what it looks like. Um, and then we're actually going to test for spark. All right, that is really dirty. Looks like it was running really rich. Obviously, I wasn't running it rich because I haven't even run it. I don't know if I have a file or something I can clean that with. I hit it with some carb cleaner. That gap is particular. You want that gap to stay the same, so if you to drop it and it bumps, in or out or whatever like that, you want to regap it. There's basically, you can look up the specs and you get a little tool and you, you push it down a little too much and then you drag it on the tool that gets bigger and bigger until it's just the right size and pop it off. Um, that looks good. Let's We're gonna test it like that. Um, so I should be able to, as long as I don't shock myself, I should be able to hold this gets the engine. I want to stay away from the dangerous part, right? Uh, ground that out and not, I don't want it to be close to the engine. And then I'm just going to watch right here uh, while I kickstart it. And I should see a spark when it kicks. Yeah. Cool. All right. So right there is where I move the light a little bit. So can see it better, ready? So there you go, that's the spark. Having checked for spark, pull it back out of the boot and we're gonna get back in there. It's always nice to hand tighten it. Um, it's easier to feel if it's not threading in right, you know. Whenever it, if it's if it's going smooth and it starts to stick or something like that, you wanna be a little gentle. You don't force it. You know what I'm saying? Because you could be cross-threading it, or there could be dirt or something in there, and you know. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
I mean, the only thing left next to check is maybe the shims. Um, we should have fuel, we should have spark. Compression would be the only other thing we might not have. Um, but I'm hoping this does it, man. So, um, if it's hard, I might just hook the battery up. This is a pain in the butt. getting anywhere like that um, I'm gonna just jump it that's what we're gonna do I have another battery here just have to get that in there. you know it's not that hard let's not jump it let's just go ahead and put the battery in there all right I'm gonna move the gas to away from the battery. Put it right there for now. Alright. Well, that is super annoying. I'm gonna push it right in there. I'm sure there's some easy thing that I just don't get about this. Okay, good enough. When I undid the battery earlier, I did not pay attention to the square bolt on the terminal. So I believe that came out, unfortunately. All right, there's the ground. when it doesn't catch on that bolt in the back and then you have to find a way to pry it up. This one's going to be even harder with this big fuse box in the way. It's almost as if the battery all the way in in order to fit the fuse box on to get past this metal lip here. Yeah, that's easier. Just tight damn fit. Juice and we made a connection. Please catch that bolt. Please catch that bolt. Oh, thank God. Okay. All right. Awesome. Bring this down. definitely what I'm going to be asking the group the other day is, is this little belt here normal? Got it. All right. Hopefully. 
this is it. Fingers crossed. Mmm, the most. So close. So I'm thinking it might be if there's a restrictor plate on the manifold, um, it's possible that the jetting that it comes with works better with the restriction. Um, It's like when I, when I give it gas, it dies. Like maybe I just need to let it warm up. Let me idle it up ever so like a quarter turn. <clears throat> quarter turn, back another quarter turn. Is idle just turned up way too high? We're back a half turn.
fighting through something, man. It's getting better, though. I think it's getting better. I don't, I don't know if it's clearing something out. I just can't, sometimes I can't touch the throttle, sometimes I need to, it's not clear. definitely better. I'm gonna bring the idol up a smidge. my question the pump is going 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 and I'm uncertain why and I don't think it's because the fuel tank isn't hooked up. I'm I guess I gotta uh, I gotta ask about that blocked off the the port on the intake so no wonder that it's not running good all right I'm gonna fold that over for now Tie that up real good. Oh dear. All right. Okay. Um, let me get my screwdriver ready because I think the idle is way off with that taken care of. All right.
well, obviously all the fuel is draining from the car because of that setup. Okay, pretty janky, but all right, we are running. That is awesome. Um, I think that's good. That's good for now. Um, <clears throat> I need to block off some of the stuff, obviously. Feel really dumb not blocking off uh, the port and the manifold. Um, clean some of that up. Uh, figure out a gas tank. Maybe I'll pull a gas tank off of one of my other bikes. Um, I don't have a met sending unit, which is. Uh, Basically, how the gas gauge can can show fuel to empty uh, on the Ruckus, it's just like a switch. Basically, it it just says it's empty. We'll look into possibly getting one of those. Um, I'm not sure, um, but yeah, it runs. I want to check the shims. It runs a little bit rough, and I'm not sure why that is. I need to check the oil. Um, but, uh, man, if you, I don't know if I'm going to break this into parts or what, but if you made it through all this, um, you know, fucking subscribe and all that bullshit and, and hit the button and the bell and all kinds of stuff. Cause we are clearly doing this now and, um, uh, anything, uh, you know, any, you subscribe, comment, anything like it really does motivate me to keep going it's fucking cold out here right now i think it's i finally got it up to about 55 degrees after four hours running the heater um and uh i mean i'm glad to be back in the shop i really am I'm glad to be out here in the garage it's been too long um I'm looking stoked to getting this and one of the other bikes running and uh, another bike will probably get taken apart and worked on um so we've got this and at least one ruck to get going and ride around and then i'll put the camera on my head and and show you that so uh awesome man it's kicked off my 2020 uh scooter season so nicely and i'm super excited about it um uh so please uh i'm gonna be excited i'm gonna show you what i do along the way and i'm gonna take you on some rides and stuff like that so uh you know join me man all right, just get life. You guys are awesome. See you later.